Hi all, in this video lecture I am going to explain about a basic timer one in an MSP 430. In our previous video lecture we have been discussed in basics of an counter, how the counter is going to work. Then we have been seen that if I consider a 4 bit counter, what will be the delay from an individual bits. Okay, if I am going to take from an LSB bit, it will be having a frequency of the original clocks what we have been given. Then if I take it at an first bit of an counter, it will be divided by an fourth and second bit it will be divided by an eight. And if I keep on going, it is going to be divided by two power n. Okay, with that assumption, we have been discussed in watchdog timer. I hope that everyone are clear with an watchdog timer. In today's lecture, we are going to see an basic timer. First, let us see the block diagram of an basic timer one. Okay, this basic timer one consists of an two counters. It is going to have an basic timer counter one, BTCNT one and BTCNT two. Okay, there are two counters. Each counter is of an eight bit. Okay. Earlier in our watchdog timer, we have been seen a 16 bit counter, but in basic timer 1, we have in two counters that is BTCNT1 and BTCNT2. Both of the counter is an 8 bit. I can use individually the counters or I can use the counters in a cascaded fashion. Okay, by seeing the diagram itself, okay, for BTCNT1, what is the clock source? Okay, here I can see that it has been connected from an A clock. Uh, in your second module or first module while discussing you know that most of the time your A clock will be an 32 kilohertz. Okay, for BTCNT1 only I can get a clock from an A clock. Okay, let us see for BTCNT2. Okay, for the BTCNT2 I can if I back propagate it here I have a 2 is to 1 mux. From this 2 is to 1 mux I can get an SM clock or A clock. Okay, that is okay straight away for this btc 2 i can use an a clock frequency or an sm clock frequency one option then if i see it at this end i have an bit selected from my btc nt1 okay that is a clock source to an btc nt1 here it is going to get a clock frequency that is a clock divided by 256 suppose if your clock frequency is 32 kilohertz it is going to get an 128 hertz okay now you have been con come to the conclusion that btcn2 can use a clock frequency alone from an a clock or an sm clock other than that one it can get an output from an btcnt1 that is at an 128 hertz okay the upper part has been discussed now now let us see that what is the useful from our btcnt1 counter okay usually the Frequency whichever we are going to get from BTC NT1, it will be useful for driving and clock modules. For driving and LCD modules, we require this basic timer one. Okay, this is not supported for LCD underscore A. That comes in an MSP 430XX new versions. Okay, now in this BTC NT2, we have an BTIX bits. Okay, by using this BTIX bits, I can get an different intervals it is going to generate an intra flat okay then here you can see from my btc nt2 i can get an 1 hertz clock to an rtc this rtc is a real time clock that means by using a basic time of 1 i can get a real time clock that is in terms of in seconds i can get it okay in order to control this basic timer 1 we have an btctl control resistor let us see what all the things it is there. Here it has an BTS select, BTH old, BTDIV, BTR, FRQX and BTIPX. Okay, first let us see this BTS select. Okay, where it is there BTS select here? Okay, this one. Okay, it is in 2 is to 1 mux. The select line is nothing but an BTS select line. If it is 0, it is going to take an SM clock. If it is 1, it is going to take an A clock. Okay, it is going to choose the clock source for my BTC NT2. Okay, here it has a BT hold that is nothing but a basic timer hold. In order to stop your basic timer, here you are going to write an 1. Okay, then here I have a BT DIV. It is going to select the clock source for BTN control register 2. That is here from BTS select line, I will choose the whether it want to take an SM clock or an A clock. 
but this BTDI we will decide whether it want to use the in a cascaded manner or in clock source from directly. Okay, if it is one, it is going to take the BTC into one in a cascaded fashion. Otherwise, it is going to take SM clock or A clock if it is zero means. Okay, then here I have an BTR FQX. It has been having a two bits. Okay, this is going to having a two bit means I can select an four different configuration from my BTC and T1 register. Okay, if it is zero zero means it may be taking from an A clock divided by 64. If it is having an one zero, that from 32 to two uh, divided by 256 configuration you can use it. Zero zero means divided by 32. 0 1 means a clock divided by 64 1 0 means a clock divided by n 128 if it is 1 1 means a clock divided by n 256 okay in that fashion timer interval i can get it and here i have an btix okay it is been having a 3 bits means here it is an 8 bit counter that means i can have an all the 8 control outputs separately Okay, if it is 0, 0 means it may be taking a 0th bit. If it is 1, 1 means it may be taking a 7th bit. Okay, let us see that one individually. Okay, it provides a clock for LCD module as I have been explained. Controls most of the function of basic timer 1. BTCLT controls most of the functionality. It has a bits in special function register. Okay, these things you might have been discussed in your first module itself. Okay, there we have a special function register. Okay, for generating an interrupts and enabling the interrupts for basic timer 1, it is been there with an IFG2 and IE2. Okay, this uh, basic timer control register is not initialized by reset. You need to do it by manually. Okay, there are two 8 bit counters. Okay, independently or cascaded, we can use. For BTC and T1, inputs from an A clock has been discussed provides the clocks for LCD module at a frequency FLCD. The two BTR of your bit selects the value of FLCD from FA clock divided by 256 to FA clock divided by 32 in powers of 2. Okay, As I already told if it is 0, 0 means FLCD is going to drive an FA clock divided by 32, 0, 1 means FLCD is divided by 64 A clock, 1, 0 means FLCD is equal to FA clock by 128. 1 1 means FLCD divided by FA clock by 256. As you all know that it is an 8 bit counter by seeing this dividing frequency you can tell from which particular bit you are going to get the counter bit you are going to get this frequency. Okay, If you are taking a 0th bit means it is divided by 2, 1 means divided by 4, 2 means divided by 8. 3 means divided by 16, 4 means divided by 32, okay. From the 4th bit, 5th bit, 6th bit and then 7th bit, it is going to be getting selected. Internally, you can tell that it is going to have an 4 is to 1 mux. For that 4 is to 1 mux, the inputs are from an BTC and T counter flip-flop, Q4, Q5, Q6 and then Q7. Okay, this will be connected to I0, I1, I2, I3. Based on that one, it is going to get selected. Okay, BTC and T2. Okay, it can be used independently in which case selects the A clock or an SM clock. Okay, if it want to be in a cascaded manner, it is going to get an output from the last bit that is nothing but an 7th bit FA clock divided by 256. It is going to give an 128s clock frequency and setting the BTH hold it stops the counter 2 but if I want to stop and BTC and T1 BTDIV is also set okay for that one here you can see it in the back diagram I for missed that okay if you have been set this BTH hold means straight away it is going to stop this particular frequency this counter okay if I want to stop this BTC and T1 also it is going to set this BTDIV bit Okay, if it has if the BTDIV and BTH hold both have been set means this is going to turn off. If it has been set to one means simply it is going to be turned off. Okay. Okay, this is what related to that. Now let us see the fourth bit. Okay, last three bits of an basic counter two. Here you have an 0, 0 means divided by 2, 4, 8, 16, 
32 64 128 256 that is meant here i have an all the counter 8 bits okay q0 q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 q6 q7 for all the outputs from my counter it has been asking an frequency that means it is going to have an internally an 8 is to 1 mux by using an select lines from this ip2 ip1 ip0 we can get a different intervals okay as i have been already told that from btc entry 2 i can get an 1 hertz clock okay if i select here which frequency i am going to get an 1 hertz clock okay for this btc entry 2 input is 128 hertz right okay if i divide by an what factor i am going to get an 1 hertz by seeing here if i divide by 2 no 4 16 not possible 32 64 okay if i divided by an 128 i am going to get an 1 hertz clock okay suppose if i want to work in my basic timer in a real time clock configuration means i need to be working in a best timer in a cascaded manner and i need to take an output from the counter 2 with a sixth bit okay if i select this particular uh, bit by setting an values i can get a real time clock okay now let us see the real time clock okay here we have a real time clock control register here it has an rtc bcd okay this bit tells that your real time clock need to be working in an hexadecimal mode or an binary coded decimal fashion okay here we have an rtc mode old okay this in order to stop or and retrieve the information then we have an rtc mode ex rtc evx okay then for enabling an interrupt and here we have an rtc fg okay here it has been having an fg only don't get confused it is an ifg it is an rtc flag here it has an RT rtc interrupt enable okay this rtc mode ex has been used to work in a calendar mode or an interval mode then here we have an rtc vx bit let's see that detail in the next slides okay the real time clock is going to support lot of other uh, register uh, registers that is going to have an only bytes of an information okay what all the things it is going to support let us see it first one okay the second information will be stored in an rtc sec register the minute information will be stored in rtc minute then our information will be stored in rtc hour okay it is going to be working in a 24 hours fashion that means it is going to run from 0 to 23 then in order to know the day of and week rtc dow which runs from 0 to 6 as you all know that we have in seven days in a week and day of and month that is an rtc day then month it is going to be taking an rtc month then uh, in order to represent an year usually we have an four digit as i have already told that it is going to have an all byte information in a single byte i can store in only two digits that's why for storing an year information we have an two register to rtc y year h upper byte information rtc year l that is an lower byte information okay let us see the individual bit okay here rtc bit 7th bit if it is 0 means it is going to be working in an hexadecimal format if it is 1 it is going to be working in an bcd format then btc old if it is 0 means real time clock is operational if it is 1 means the rtc module has been stopped or you can tell it that if your rtc mode x is 1 1 means rtc and basic timer both have been stopped okay let us see that rtc mode x real time clock and then clock source selection okay this rtc mode ex is going to be helpful for selecting a clock source for our real time clock okay this real time clock can be used for uh, gathering and real time information in terms of a minute second hour or a day or an year other than that one it can also be used for a timer interval it is going to be having a 32 bit counter internally for those 32 bit counter i can get an clock sources okay those clock sources will be selected by this rtc mode ex 
bits okay two bits then this if it is 0 0 means it is going to select an 32 bit counter mode okay the clock source is an a clock then if it is 0 1 means it is going to take an 32 bit counter running but the clock source will be taken from the q6 of an counter 2 as you all know that btc nt counter 6 it is an 1 hertz clock for an real time information in the same way if it rtc mode ex is 10 it is going to be running in a 32 bit counter fashion itself but it is going to taking a clock source from a sub master clock then it is going to be 1 1 means it is going to be working in a calendar mode that is clock source is an 1 hertz clock from a counter 2 okay that's why here in this rtc bcd this is going to be useful only when my rtc mode ex is in an 1 1 format okay then only i can decide that my calendar need to be in an hexadecimal format or an bcd format i hope everyone are clear here this is going to tell my calendar mode whether it need to be an hexadecimal format or an bcd format in order to tell that i need to first put my rtc counter into a calendar mode right that's why here i have been highlighted with an rtc mode x is equal to 1 1 okay let us see that rtc evx okay this rtc evx is a real time clock interrupt event here i can use an counter in an counter mode or an calendar mode okay if i am using in an counter mode means this rtex bit if you have been set in 0 0 means it is going to set an interrupt from an 8th bit overflow okay as you all know that uh, it is going to be running in a counter mode means 32 bit counter will be running okay whenever there is an 8th bit it has been overflow has been occurred at that time it is going to generate an interrupt then if you are using an 0 1 at that time it is going to see for an 16th bit whenever it has been become an 1 it is going to generate an overflow then if you are using an 1 0 means it is going to get an overflow from an 24th bit whenever it has been set if it is 1 1 means it is going to see an from an 32 bit okay if you are using in a calendar mode okay at what time it is going to generate an interrupt okay if you have been given an 0 0 means for every minute change it is going to give an interrupt if it is 0 1 means for every hour change it is going to give an interrupt if it is 1 0 means every day at midnight it is going to give an interrupt if it is 1 1 means every day at noon it is going to give an interrupt okay this rtc ie is a real time clock interrupt enabled if it is 0 means interrupt is not enabled if it is 1 means interrupt is enabled rtc fg real time clock interrupt flag no time event has been occurred if it has been having a value 1 means time event has been occurred okay interrupts from an rtc okay for getting an interrupts i need to make sure that my rtc ie has been set okay as you all know that that real time clock is in associated with your basic time of 1 both the bt ifg and rtfg flags are set if you are enabled and rtc ie enable bit means it is going to generate an interrupt for both ifg and rtc flag interrupt cleared automatically when it is being served okay that means if you have set this rtc interrupt flag means simply it is going to generate an interrupts for basic timer one as well as this rtc flag is going to be set okay if you have written an interrupt service routine it is automatically going to be served the interval is determined by this rtc evx bits okay whatever the value you are going to give okay as we have been discussed in this previous slide okay for which interval you want to be selected okay now let us see if the interrupts come from basic timer one as described earlier if rtc ie is clear if i am not set this rtc ie means simply the basic timer one is going to generate an interrupt based on that bct control register okay there the interval is determined by bt ipx bit register right okay the real time clock sets its rtc flag according to rtvx bit but this does not request an interrupt still here i have not been stopped in real time clock but it will be running but i have been not enabled in interrupt at that time what it is going to do 
okay at that time it is going to be simply setting my rtc fg inter uh, it is not an inter flag only an flag that flag will be set but it is not going to request an interrupt okay how come the system or an processor can know that that flag has been set in order to know that one i need to write and program in a polling fashion that continuously looking that whether that flag has been set or not okay you can take an example that okay you are going to your door or an corridor to see that whether someone has been came like that you need to write a program in a periodic manner that to see that whether the flag has been set there is no alarm clock and interrupt requested at a specific time and and date that means that here we have an interrupt capabilities in terms of a minute change hour change date or an month or an year but here i cannot uh, get an interrupt to a specified time and and date suppose that you want to get an interrupt on a 20th april how you can get it that is not supported by the system those things need to be implemented by yourself through an software okay that is called as an gocha okay the flag is called rtc flag real time clock flag it is not an rtc inter flag okay these things need to be taken into your consideration thank you for watching